Terry Cooper's Red and White Army. That's the cheer that's been ringing around St. James's Park all season as Exeter City stormed to success in the fourth division. Their away form didn't do them full justice, but here it's been a much different story. Big crowds, great performances, and some brilliant goals. Coming up then, the game that took them to automatic promotion into the third division. Before that, highlights from some of the best games here at the park. McDermott running down the line, but Robottom switches play, and it's gone to Richard Dryden. Maybe a chance for Dryden. Chance comes in, and the flexion just inches wide of that right-hand post. Takes it past one man. And that's a good ball to Vinicum. Takes it well, now feeds Robottom. While he's waiting. Can he get across in this time? Yes, he can. Over the goalkeeper's Free kick taken very quickly to the far post. Young is there. McDermott. No bottom. Chips it in again. Now for Richard Young. Maybe a shot from Richard Young. The best opportunity of the match. Pushed wide when it looked as if Richard Young must score for City. Pretty weak shot, it must be said, but the keeper did well. Brian McDermott. Holds up play, then decides to take it to the byline. Cross comes in, Young is there, and the keeper had to be very alert to tip that one over the bar. Just Richard Young was poised to strike for City. Cuts it back now to Vinicum. This time the cross does come in. It's a long one to the far side. Hiley's there, heads it back in. And that's a very cheeky back heel from Brian McDermott, almost catching Steve Sherwood unawares, but the keeper just getting to it. Whitehead, forward to Neville now. Gets a cross in, good cross too, and Robottom really should have put that in the back of the net. Knocks it forward, that's a lovely ball to Steve Neville. And eventually uh, takes the ball into the area, and a penalty for City. Persistence from Steve Neville, he looked as if he'd lost the ball, he got it again, and was immediately tripped just inside the area. So 29 minutes gone, nil-nil, here's Robottom with a penalty, and it's there! for City, the opening goal well deserved, City 1 Grimsby 0 Grimsby corner it's a long high one heads come in, all kinds of danger and it's there initial header from Tilson a deflection I'm sure past Dave Walter but against the run of play and Grimsby have levelled it at 1-all Robotter Gets the cross in, it's a good one too! Dryden's header, and a lovely save by Steve Sherwood. Long range effort from Childs! And what a great effort that was! Walter got his fingertips to it and hit the post. And then over the last attack of the match for City, it's one all. Can they get a winner? Cross comes in, cleared off the line. What excitement in these dying moments of the game last attempt comes in now more confusion there! more confusion in the Grimsby defense and Sean Taylor is the man who undoubtedly has sealed three points for City here at St James's Park tonight Sean Taylor with a free kick a fine Dryden it was nearly picked up by Clive Whitehead what a good what a good try by uh, McDermott he, he trapped that beautifully and let fly, and that was an excellent effort. And the slip there by Bailey at the wrong time. Calvin Plummer in a good shooting position here. Plummer, good effort. And only just over as well. Good save by Walter. And it's gone, the corner taken by McDermott. Now City close in again. Bailey, knocks it wide for Neville. Steve Neville. I'm not sure he's a foul, yes. Not too far away from the area either. It's there! Down the bottom. Great header. Now, a bit of 
beautiful cross that by Whitehead. And Robotham floating in for his tenth goal of the season. Then he's got Hardy on that overlap, but a little too far that time. But Hardy could get it second time, he does. The cross is in. And that looked like a foul against Robotham. But is that it? Free kick forward, Walter should have that, lets it go to Plummer, and that was very nearly a tragic mistake by the city keeper. Next corner, nodded on by Morris, yes, well, that goal's been coming for the last uh, five or ten minutes. Goal there by David Waller from the corner, it's now Exeter City 2, Chesterfield 1. So Tiley on the right-hand side, can he get a cross in? Yes, he can, it's a good one too. McDermott shot, Dryden following in, and that's the opening goal of the game, 1-0 to City. Dryden, header on, Neville's there, and McDermott forces the ball over the line, and City leading 2-0. Good play indeed by Neville, gets the ball out to Hiley. Now on to Paul Batty, onto the byline, and Robotham! 1-0 City lead. Clive Whitehead plays Kearns onside. Now here's Hunter, must score, and he does. Jeff Hunter getting the equaliser. All cleared, not very well though. And the referee points to the penalty spot. Mark Cooper's foul on Paul Haylock. And here's Steve Lovell. Can he score? Yes, he can. No problems in beating Kevin Miller. So it's Whitehead taking the ball into the area. And that looks like a penalty, and it is. Whitehead fouled by Johnson. Here's Robottom. It's one all. Two penalties in the game. Whitehead. Holding up play for a moment, and that looks like yet another penalty. So can Robotham make it two out of two? Yes, he can! City leading by two goals to one. Dermot lays the ball back. Here's Whitehead. Lovely ball through to Danny Bailey in space. Gets the cross in. Here's Neville! Lovely goal by City. They lead 3-1. So the corner comes in from Whitehead, and McNichol's there, scoring against his old club. Jim McNichol opens the scoring in the Devon Derby. Finally, nice run by him down the right, gets a cross in too. The keeper fumbles it. There's Robottom poaching. He won't score a simpler goal than that. 2-0, Exeter lead Torquay. Steve Neville. He's on one of his jinking runs. Takes the ball to the byline, past Matthews, to the far post. Clive Whitehead's there. 3-0 to City on New Year's Day against Torquay. So Jim McNichols, free kick to the edge of the area, flicked on. Here's Bennyworth, should make it back to the keeper, but no! The keeper's missed it, and City are in the lead. A bizarre own goal from Cyril Knowles' men. From Neville and Robottom. There's that partnership again. Robottom making it 2 0. So Hartley Ball on the break. Ball comes into the area. City can't clear for a moment. Here's Dalton. Tries a shot. In the end, it comes to Allen. And they're back in the game at 2 1. Joe Allen, the scorer. Scott Hiley's free kick played into the area. Robottom's header on. Comes out to Neville. Gets a chance for a cross in. Robottom! And that sealed the three points. City three, Hartlepool one. This comes in from the right then. Here's McNichol, header on. And Robottom in at the far post. And those are the kind of goals he likes scoring. 1-0. Here's a substitute batting. Takes the ball infield now, shakes up for a shot. Oh, and the cruelest of deflections. Paul Batty will claim that one. 
The long through ball. Steve Neville with just the keeper to beat. Just an empty net now. Neville from the acutest of angles. What a great finish from the assistant manager. Here's Neville. Plays the ball into the area. Dryden. And he's brought crashing to the ground. And that is a penalty. Penalty King Rowbottom. And that's the corner he likes. So with six minutes on the clock, it's Brian McDermott swings in the corner. It's a long one this time. McNichol underneath it falls to Neville with the shot. And right across the goal map, could have gone anywhere. McDermott with the corner to the far post. Keeper touches it over the head of Steve Neville. And Neville leaves it. Let's it go for the throw in. And here's McNichol, knocks it across. And there it is, the first goal for City. Half an hour gone, and it's Sean Taylor, the captain, who gets the opening goal. Nickel, and it's there! Sean Taylor gets his second goal of the match. What a night is turning out to be for him. City two, and in fact nil. Good play down the right. Nice ball through to Robottom, must score surely. Good save by the keeper. Dryden, lovely header between the keeper and the defender. One nil to City, but Robottom left injured. So, can he make it 2-0 from the penalty spot? Yes, he can! And that surely will wrap up the three points this afternoon. McDermott with the corner. McNichol has moved forward again. Cross from McDermott. There is McNichol! What a great goal from the Exeter defender. City 1, Rochdale 0. Here's McPherson. Launches a shot. Deflected away. The falls to McDermott. Gets his cross in. Taylor! Now Steve Neville! City leading by two goals to nil. Steve Neville with the goal. Now Richard Young must score. Crosses instead. Neville's second goal. And City running riot now. 3-0 they lead. Here's Ben Rowe. Must score the fourth for City. That looked a little bit suspect, that challenge. And the referee agrees. A penalty for City. So McNichol looking for his second goal. And it's there. City four. Rochdale nil. Summerfield brought crashing to the ground. That's a free kick to City. Taken quickly. Jim McNichol's hat trick. And you will not see a better free kick than that. Good clearance from Stockford. Good break, too. This could be dangerous. Chris Beaumont. And a goal on here, surely. Yes, beautifully placed. Goal for Brett Angel. So 22 minutes gone, it's Exeter City nil, Stockport County 1. Whitehead. Oh, it looked like a foul in the area, yes. The referee, no doubts about that. The foul on Kevin Summerfield. Gary Leonard committing the foul as McNichol comes up for the penalty. It's there. Jim McNichol puts City back in the game here. It's Exeter City 1, Stockport County 1. Dryden on the left, good cross into the middle, finds Neville, takes it one way. Lovely shot from Steve Neville. The assistant manager puts City into the lead. Free kick taken by Dryden. Flicked on by McDermott, finds Richard Young. Lovely shot from Young. The tall striker gives City a 2-0 lead. And a lovely finish from the man they call Tyson. So the scene was set for a dramatic climax to the season. Four games to go and City needing just a point against promotion rival Southend United to assure them of a place in Division 3 next season. A game to live long in the memory of City supporters. Our commentator, Peter Brackley. St James's Park is alive with anticipation. Exeter on the brink of promotion and no one among the club's large and vibrant following tonight expects anything other than the result that will clinch it. One point will suffice, but Terry Cooper's team, of course, will chase the victory that will also edge them nearer the championship. Injury worries have beset Exeter over the past few days. It's not their full strength side with defenders Sean Taylor, Jim McNichol and Angus McPherson all missing. 
Well, Terry Cooper has shuffled his players around. Lee Rogers will partner Richard Dryden in the centre of the defence with Tom Kelly on the left. 17 goals for Steve Neville this season. Terry Cooper left him out at Gillingham on Saturday. He's back in the firing line tonight. It's a very important match, of course, for South End too. Defeat could seriously affect their prospects of finishing in the top three. Some familiar names in their side, four Devonians, four of this team are former Exeter players. Martin Ling, Ian Benjamin, David Crown, and Mark Cooper, who, of course, is the son of the Exeter manager. David Crown will need careful attention. 20 goals this season have made him comfortably South End's leading goalscorer. Tonight's referee is from Loughborough, it's Peter Jones. We're all set then for Exeter's biggest night of the season. Southend in the blue shirts, kicking off and attacking the goal to our right in the first half. And I wonder just how tense the players are going to be out there. Such a crucial game for both sides. Exeter with this marvellous unbeaten home record behind them. A sequence now of 28 matches unbeaten Paul Clark Clark is the assistant manager of South End crowd through Benjamin he was exchanging some lively banter friendly banter too with the crowd beforehand Benjamin of course who played for Exeter earlier in the season and he's made a very promising start with South End as Ian Benjamin scoring three goals in the few matches he's played for them but the chase is on here straight away for Exeter. McDermott. Whitehead was waiting in the middle. Neville's up there too now. And it's away for the corner off Austin. And that's lifted the crowd straight away. Lee Rogers has come forward from the back. It'll be McDermott to take the kick. South End with almost everybody back defending this corner. Huge crowd inside the ground and quite a few more were told outside as well. Still trying to get inside. Richard Young. Away by Austin. This is Kelly with the throw. Various readjustments then in the Exeter side. Pat Kelly, the former Torquay man who can play at left back or midfield he has the left back berth tonight it's a free kick then to Exeter McDermott will flip one in towards the towering figure of Richard Young around the edge of the penalty area Didn't reach Young. Benjamin for the header away. Batty. Now Rogers. Can he cross one in from here? Ling with the pass, finding Crown. Off goes Benjamin. And that was sound defensive play. The tackle went by Clive Whitehead, player coach, of course, of Exeter City. Young chasing here, away by Martin, who's had to revert to a defensive role tonight. Martin, with Southend having a couple of defenders out injured as well. Young didn't make it. McDermott might. He had highly up with him, but McDermott's turned well. And he's forced the corner. Well, appeals for a penalty from some Exeter supporters, so I think they're going to appeal for anything tonight. With the team so close to promotion, you can hardly blame them. Didn't reach Rogers initially, then it did. Whistle had already got, though, for infringement. So, free kick to South End, who survive, but Exeter have started very brightly here. Paul 
Michael Satsum in goal for Southend. A man who's had a very consistent season for them. And Southend, indeed, early on in the campaign, were leading the table and looking to justify the bookmakers' strong odds in their favour as favourites to go up. Well, they still may well do. Another free kick to Exeter. Danny Bailey may well take this one. No, he's leaving it for Scott Hiley. Rogers has stayed back, but Dryden has gone up this time. Looking for Richard Young. Martin was up above him. Now Kelly. Good ball in for Neville. Now Whitehead. Kelly with the cross, Young lurking. And Southend very much on the defensive here in the first few minutes. And they're taking quite a hammering from Exeter. That unblemished home record has to go sometime, but Exeter fans hoping it won't be tonight. Dryden with a header. Defensive roll in for Dryden tonight. Normally seen operating down the left flank. But with Taylor out and two other regulars as well, Dryden operating in the centre of the back four. McDermott taking the throw quickly. Here's Neville. The tackle, though, by Paul Clark, who's been a model of consistency for Southend throughout the campaign. When he's played, that is, he's had his injury problems. Highly. It's an Exeter throw. Take it very sharply. Neville. Highly again. Beyond Whitehead. And away comes South End. Good crown. In from Cooper. Butler reinstated in the south end side. And that was a dreadful cross then from Mark Cooper. Son of Terry. And Terry was saying beforehand, I don't mind if my son plays as long as he doesn't take too many free kicks. So obviously his dad has been teaching him a few tricks. On loan, Mark Cooper with south end. Away by Clark. Benjamin. Butler. Good tackling though by Bailey. Trying to send Young away. And it was Austin with a last ditch tackle then. And what an important challenge that was then from Dean Austin on Richard Young. Brown. Little flick in the direction of Benjamin. But there was Kelly to tidy up for Exeter. 17 home wins so far for Exeter City. And what a contrast to their away form. 13 away defeats. And they may well create some sort of record if they do go up as a team having one of the best home records in the Football League and one of the worst away records. Martin with the free kick, looking for Benjamin. Here's Crown, the two working well in tandem for South End in recent weeks. Rogers. Rock rests on his shoulders with Sean Taylor out of the side and Lee Rogers, who hasn't had too many opportunities since being suspended earlier in the season. Cooper again. Off goes Benjamin. And that was a risky back pass sent from Rogers.
came off Bailey. Oh, and Crown was through then. Brought down right on the edge of the area. And Miller really had no alternative then. The ball was foolishly played back. And no one had spotted the striker then. And as Crown went down, referee Peter Jones having a word with Kevin Miller, who really had no option then but to bring David Crown down. So a let off then for Exeter. And one or two nervy moments for them so far. And there's more danger here. Benjamin has placed himself inside the wall. Now will Crown try one from here, or Edinburgh perhaps? Here's Crown, straight into the wall. It was Neville, I think it hit. Away comes Richard Young. Not too far though, he was impeded. Free kick to Exeter. And with 10 minutes gone, no score so far. But Southend beginning to settle. And clearly this is going to be a very tough match for Exeter. So close, Exeter now to returning to the third division after a six-year absence. Benjamin, neat control from him. Here's Cooper, now Crown. And certainly South End beginning now to grow in confidence. And Crown isn't short on that. 20 successful strikes from him this season, and he's always been a consistent goal scorer. He got 29 last season. David Crown, who had a spell at Exeter, one of his previous clubs. Came off Richard Young. Benjamin. On from Batty, who's just returned from a loan period with Cambridge. Dryden forward. Martin looked to be struggling then, but he got away with it. Cooper chasing Kelly. Well, that's tidy play by Kelly. Very prominent, of course, it caught a successful run to the final of the Sherpa Van Trophy last season, Tom Kelly. And he's returned to the West Country, the South West, from a spell with York. Austin taking the throw. Here's Crown, policed by Dryden. Cooper now. Dangerous cross in. Benjamin with a snapshot. And a few Exeter hearts skipped a beat then. Here's Batty now. Couldn't avoid the second tackle. Austin through. And Kevin Miller. Thankfully, from Exeter's point of view, was in the right place then. But the warning signs were there. They're very sharp, these two up front, Benjamin and David Crown, for South End. This is Scott Hiley taking the throw for Exeter. Neville. Surprisingly omitted at Ginningham, Steve Neville on Saturday. Young Ben Rowe getting his chance up front, but Terry Cooper calling on Neville's experience tonight in this very difficult match for his team. On from Benjamin, who's winning quite a few balls in the air. And you wonder just how much Exeter are going to miss. Jim McNichol and Sean Taylor at the back. They've been such a tower of strength for Exeter. Highly. Here's Bailey now. Great favourite with the crowd, Danny Bailey. Not really made his mark on this game as yet.
was Clark whacking it upfield. Only found Rogers though. Ball back from Hiley. Now off goes Neville. Persevering and his persistence has paid off with a corner. McDermott will take it. Rogers and Dryden making their way forward from the back. So there's plenty of height in there for Exeter. Benjamin has come back to Mark Rogers. It was Clark who partially cleared initially. There's Batty. And all the way through to Paul Sansom. A tenth struggle and a pretty competitive one too, as you'd expect. Batty. Butler was in there though strongly for South End. Butler again. Really scrapping for it, highly forward. Martin with a header. Here's Butler. Benjamin. Now then for Cooper. And as he threatened to get clear then of Kelly, I think the referee may well have given the free kick. It's certainly a decision in favour of South End. And the referee asking his linesman what it should be. Looked like a foul to me. And I think it is a free kick that he's given. Dean Austin to take it. David Martin has come up, so Richard Young has run all the way back to cover him. Martin Ling. Another of the former Exeter men. In towards Crown. Good defending though by Rogers. And then a foul on Hiley. And that was late from Crown then. And rather unnecessary. And I think that is going to be a booking. Indeed it is. For David Crown. The yellow card, brandished by the referee. The caution for David Crown. And it was certainly a very untidy challenge on Scott Hiley. Hiley himself is OK, taking the free kick. McDermott out jumped, though, by Edinburgh. <laughs> Bailey, as ever, battling away in midfield for Exeter. Benjamin with Dryden. It's a corner. And South End after a slightly shaky start, certainly aren't overawed here. They've sent Martin forward. Crown's in there too. Benjamin beaten in the air though by Dryden. Butler. And that came off Whitehead, so another corner. Exeter having to endure some pressure here. Cooper taking the corner. The shot was half it through. Benjamin came back off Rogers, who really felt the full force of that shot then. And it was just as well for Exeter that he was in the way. As I'm sure he'll agree once he's come to his senses. But at the moment, Lee Rogers is in some trouble down on the ground. And I think that shot may well have hit him in the midriff. Neville appeals for handball. It's given. And that, I need to tell you, hurt. The shot that hit him in the midriff. Now, what can Exeter do here with this free kick? McDermott is there, and Batty too. The referee not happy that the wall is far enough back. Batty driving it straight into the wall, and away by Crown. Almost at the halfway point in the first half, it's still Exeter nil, South End nil, but here's Hiley. Now Bailey. <laughs> Rogers, who seems to have made a full recovery, and that'll be a relief for Terry Cooper. 
watching over on the sidelines. I asked Terry Cooper beforehand if he was feeling tense, certainly not, he said, it's just another game. But I think there was a twinkle in his eye. He knows how important this one is. With Exeter so close. Batty. Butler. Looking for Crown. Cooper tangling with Bailey. Batty sending Neville clear. He's got Young in the middle, and McDermott arriving too. Still Neville. Looking for Young. And Clark was in the way. Well, that was more promising then from Exeter. McDermott. Highly. Neville with the header. Safely through, though, to Paul Sansom. But the aerial threat of Richard Young may well be an avenue that Exeter will look to exploit in this game. An avenue to go. Triton winning it in the air. Neville is Batty now. Right edge pass, off goes Bailey. He'll chase anything, this fellow. The man with the Rude Hullet hairstyle. And Exeter will be hoping that he plays like Rude Hullet tonight. <laughs> On from Whitehead. Here's Neville. Two old stages combining very effectively. Whitehead now. In towards McDermott, too long, it was over his head. And it didn't find Richard Young either. Off Bailey. Header on was from Ling. This is Crown now. Good turn by Crown. Rogers had placed it tidily. Neville trying to turn Clark. That's not easy. Paul Clark is a very determined defender. There's Terry Cooper looking on anxiously from the side, wondering if his team are going to find this breakthrough goal. And that will certainly ease their nerves. One point needed from this, and of course, their remaining games too. So if, if they don't make it tonight, they've other matches in which to clinch promotion. Exeter still have to play Scarborough and Burnley at home and Lincoln away. Free kick to South End. Touched on. Crown almost wriggled in then. He's a constant menace up front. And the Exeter defenders are finding it hard to contain Crown and Benjamin. 25 minutes gone in the first half. On from Ling. Picking up the return pass from Crown. Here's Butler now. Crown working extremely hard. And he's not afraid to shoot from anywhere, this fellow. Kevin Miller, who picked up a facial wound on Saturday, but seems to be OK. None the worse for wear. And Whitehead then it straight offside. And at the moment, South End having an equal share of this game. Clark with the free kick. Ling. The tackle though from Hiley. This is Edinburgh. Crown. In for Benjamin. And certainly Exeter can't afford to relax at the back. 
such are the problems that they're receiving from South End. Martin with the header. On then from Butler. And that has to be a free kick to South End. Tom Kelly, the offender. This is Clark. Benjamin with Dryden. This is Bailey. Edinburgh with a header. On then from Bailey. All rather scrappy for a moment. On from Cooper. No offside. Good header from Paul Clark. Rogers and Exeter have rather lost their way at the moment. South End have their measure. Rogers. Benjamin. Can't get away from Rogers though. Rogers, the former Bristol City man, giving a sturdy job at the back. Off goes Neville. Martin, though, had covered his run. So a throw to South End, who slipped up at home to Grimsby, the team in between these two sides in the table. Last Friday, a home defeat by South End, which really rock them back but if they can pick up a point or more here tonight they'll be right back in there fighting for that automatic promotion place three of course on offer and one more to go up from the playoffs Exeter in pole position the leaders Grimsby second South End third and behind them a whole cluster of clubs still hoping to achieve promotion. Out of play, it's a throw to South End. Half an hour gone now in the first half. And you have to say that Exeter's chances have been few and far between. Bailey. On from McDermott. Flags up though. I think it was Neville who just wandered offside. Clark with the free kick. Looking for Benjamin. Down for Crown. Austin. Benjamin again. Bailey just got a foot in then at the vital moment. And right to hoof it clear. On from Butler. And this time there's an offside decision cheered by the crowd against South End. But the crowd there looking a little worried and... Exeter's rhythm has deserted them so far. Only fleetingly have they shown their attacking flair. Miller taking the free kick. Martin with the header. That was Cooper. Here's Crown. He's shaken off Dryden. Butler making the forward run. And Batty getting back well. Paul Batty, who's had his injury problems and has been on loan to Cambridge. Finding himself now back in the thick of the action for Exeter. Martin climbing high above Young. Neville. This is McDermott. And Sansom just having to tip it over. 
He had to watch that one all the way. Dangerously floated in then by McDermott. Up comes Rogers and Dryden. Young is in there too. It'll be McDermott with the corner. South End have left only Crown upfield. Header on from Young. Neville was knocked down at the far post. Protests are in vain. The referee deciding that he rather made the most of that. I think actually it was Cooper that he collided with, so I don't know what Father Terry would have had to say about that one if a penalty had been given. He'd have had mixed feelings, I think. Here's the corner again. Hit it on there by Young. And there, well, looked like an elbow on Steve Neville from Cooper. <laughs> South End free kick. Edinburgh taking it. Benjamin. Here's Cooper. And he was pushing then. On Kelly. But it's been a very edgy display by Exeter in the first half. Knowing that promotion is so near. And they haven't quite got going so far. Richard Young, two goals in the last two games. And Exeter would dearly love one from him now. Highly through, off goes Neville. Clark was in the way. It's a poor header though. McDermott. Now Richard Young. Didn't find Neville. On from Smith. And Benjamin offside. Marginal, but he was. A free kick just inside the Exeter half. The lights rather dim out there now, so I think we'll have the front lights on soon. Perhaps that might spark up Exeter's performance. Young. Very hard to shake off. He's got three players around him. I think the best he can hope for here is a corner. Throw was taken quickly. McDermott. He has Bailey with him. Bailey's cross in for Richard Young. Flashed wide. Enterprising approach play then from Exeter and Richard Young on the end of the cross. And he was very near then. Former South End player Richard Young, he had a spell there. And he almost scored then against his old club was high from Crown. I think in fairness to him he didn't realise that Rogers was that close. Richard Young, he's come nearest to a goal in the first half for Exeter. Batty. Young. Free kick given though. For the foul on Young. And what a Philippa goal would give Exeter now. As we near half time. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Dryden. Went past Young. Appeals for handball. Nothing given. Here's Rogers. Benjamin this time away. Only as far as Kelly. Young going in. Away by Smith. Highly. 
now McDermott skipping past the first tackle not the second though but here's Bailey Exeter looking to inflict some damage now well, that was a good tackle Dryden Kevin Miller, who's proved such an able successor to Dave Walter, who's on load at Plymouth. Now Neville, Whitehead. Down he goes. He won't get a penalty for that. Benjamin. Well, the crowd are angry, but I don't think, <laughs> if he was honest, Clive Whitehead really thought that was a penalty. He's been around a bit, of course. And he hasn't convinced this referee that that deserved a penalty. A rare mistake by David Martin, who's had a very sound game at the back so far for South End. Here he is again, beating Neville in the air. Benjamin. Off goes Crown and Rogers. A steadying influence at the back. Five minutes of the first half to go. Still, we await the first goal. In this promotion battle at St James's Park. Two teams right up there at the top of the table. And off goes Young now. He has Neville in the middle. Neville, can he finish? Yes! That's the first goal, that's Steve Neville. On the mark again for Exeter. The crowd are ecstatic, and Exeter, after a pretty wobbly first half in many ways, have found their form at last. A sudden break. And it really stretched south end, they were caught square then. Young played it in, and Neville, the coolest of finishers, strikes for the 18th time this season. The assistant manager of Exeter makes it 1-0. And Exeter take another firm step towards promotion. Four minutes to go, here's Ling. Southend looking to bounce straight back. And Miller with a confident save. Now there's a buzz around the ground. It's eased a few nerves, but of course there's a long way to go yet. But it might put a slightly different complexion on the half-time team talk from Terry Cooper. I wouldn't think he's relaxed over there on the bench, but at least his team have gone ahead. Not too much emotion showing on his face. Over Clark's head, and he was pushing then, he was leaning on Richard Young. Bailey with the free kick. Here's Hiley. Looking for Young, there's a little nudge then, but he, I think, rather backed into his marker. Bailey's foot was high, was it? No, the decision's gone the other way. Into the last three minutes of the first half. And the Exeter fans in great heart now. Whitehead. Now oh, the linesman says that's out of play. And he was right next to him, so he's got a better view than I have. A test of character now for Southend. Who've done well in this first half, and they will feel they're a little unlucky to be trailing. Kelly, read though superbly by Martin. Rogers with the header. Martin again. Benjamin was chasing, but clever control by Kelly. Young marauding up front. And he's fouled, was he then, by Martin? 
Two minutes to go, another free kick to Exeter. Whitehead will take it. Leaves it though for Kelly, or McDermott perhaps. In the meantime, the referee is surrounded by players and is having an argument with somebody. Not quite sure what the gist of this is. And it looks as if he is now cautioning David Martin for that last offence. There it is, the yellow card. I must confess I didn't get too good a view of that. If I had leaned forward, I'd have fallen off the gantry then. Goalkeepers come for it. Easy catch for Sansom. Off goes Ling. We're in the last minute now of the first half. Offside against Crown. Only a few seconds of the first half remaining. for Young, Benjamin got the flick off, and Crown again is offside, so they've sorted themselves out at the back now, Exeter. We're now into time, added on for stoppages at the end of the first half. Kelly's free kick, here's Cooper, Butler. Kelly hoisting one forward. Young inevitably was up there challenging. Whitehead. Beaten low by Austin. Now Cooper. Kelly's tackle though. Winning it back for Exeter. And there's another foul. Tempest becoming very frayed there. And the referee sprinting over before the trouble got out of hand. And he's kept control well so far, Peter Jones. A match of such significance to both sides. And Exeter shading in at this stage. Whitehead. Cross him was towards Young and Bailey. And he'll chase anything, Danny Bailey. He's had a very consistent season for Exeter. Having come from non-league football, He's really made an impact this season. Off Dryden, here's Kelly. The half-time whistle is blown. And it's a cheer of relief around the ground for the Exeter fans. The goal from Steve Neville towards half-time, dividing the two teams. After South End, in fairness to them, had certainly threatened. And Exeter really hadn't had too many opportunities before Neville took one away and Exeter going at half time leading here by a goal to nil Welcome back to St James's Park as Exeter City prepare to start the second half, leading here by a goal to nil, and on the verge of achieving the third of Terry Cooper's four targets for the season. The first was to avoid relegation, the second to reach the playoffs, and the third is a place in the top three. And of course his fourth target, the championship itself, which is very much in Exeter's sights now. Three more points from this game, and they can then pitch the championship by winning their next match. And they have a free kick right at the start of this second half, which Tom Kelly will take for them. Richard Young climbing high, didn't get there though. McDermott kept his balance well. 
Butler, again the hands are up, hoping for a penalty. The referee totally disinterested. Bailey now. Can Exeter build on the goal, scored by Steve Neville, six minutes before half-time. Or will Southend come back, and they certainly showed signs in the first half. That they are capable of scoring. This is Ling. Brought back at the side. Benjamin. Did look lively at the first half, Benjamin. And he and Crown find a formidable combination. It's Edinburgh with a throw. Benjamin trying to turn. He got his shot in two. And highly able to clear. Neville is a judge the offender then. Neville thought he'd won the free kick. The referee has given it the other way. It's Clark with the free kick for South End. Crown straight down low to the path of Batty. Clark again with Young. And they're having quite a scrap, these two. And the decision has gone against Paul Clark, which she didn't approve of quite clearly. Lee Rogers took a battering in the first half. Looking fresh enough now. His free kick, the target is Richard Young. Got up well. Edinburgh away. Whitehead. Here's Kelly in support. Link cuts it out. And was Benjamin onside? Well, the flag stayed down. But Exeter survived it anyway. Seventy two goals now this season for Exeter. And of course, thirty of those from Darren Rowbottom, who's out through injury. Benjamin with Rogers. Who's got the legs? Rogers just. I would he covered some ground then. Determined to do well on being restored to the side, Lee Rogers, and he has let no one down. Kevin Miller, hoping his first season as a pro is going to end with promotion. Edinburgh went straight into McDermott. Highly with Ling. It's an excellent throw. A rather chilly night now at St James's, but the Exeter fans won't mind how cold it is as long as their team win this game. Just to remind you, though, of course, one point will be enough to secure promotion. Smith didn't find Benjamin. Rogers was there again. On from Young. Bailey. Young was fouled this time by Martin. Neville takes the kick. McDermott. Here's Hiley. Now Lynn for Southend. Blacks up, offside against Crown. He looks very frustrated. And looking daggers at the poor old linesman. All he did was raise his flag.
Too long for Young, but Neville was hoping. Now McDermott, three waiting in the middle. Came back off Clark. McDermott with a second chance to cross it in. Young. Butler and Smith trying to get it clear. Eventually Cooper does. Highly in well, though. What a season he's had, Scott Highly. So many successes in the Exeter side. It's Bailey's pass. Batty was prepared to chase, but had no real chance then. Martin always the favourite to get there first. Austin. Kelly with Benjamin. And they're looking more relaxed now, Exeter. Perhaps they can turn on the style in the second half. Leading by a goal to nil, Steve Neville, the scorer. Young with a header. Bailey. A way to go, almost opened up for him then. Rogers with a firm and illegal tackle on Crown. South End free kick. David Martin, though, is looking rather anxiously over to the bench, so I think he's going to have to go off injured. And Andy Edwards is coming on to replace Martin, so that's a real setback for South End. Martin, a key player in their side, and Young Andy Edwards has gone into the back four. Alongside Paul Clark in Martin's position. Crown. Came off Rogers. It's a corner. Young has come back with Edwards, who's a tall defender, hoping to use that height around the six-yard area. Benjamin and Crown in the six-yard area. Edinburgh. Here's Ling. That's a fine run by Ling. In the end, his way to goal was blocked as it came back off the side of the post. Miller there had it covered. And a good injection of pace then shown by Martin Ling. Young reaches it first. Neville. Did that brush an arm? I think so. The referee has given the free kick. As Neville throws the ball away in disgust. South End looking to claw their way back into the game. Clark with the free kick. Finds Benjamin. Cooper. Here's Crown. It's a free kick. And the tension again beginning to show. It's Mark Cooper involved there with Tom Kelly. And the referee wanting a word with both of them. A shake of the hands between Kelly and Cooper, so all is well there. Ten minutes into the second half. And I wonder, is Steve Neville's goal going to be enough? to secure promotion. Terry Cooper, of course, will want further goals now to make sure. Young's header flags up as Steve Neville went through. A free kick to be taken by Andy Edwards, the young substitute who's come on for David Martin. Cooper. It's a promising run from him. And the shot driven wide. Didn't really have any direction on the shot. From Mark Cooper. And it'll be interesting to see how he develops. His father Terry, of course, 
found his best form really later in his career. He was, in fact, almost released Terry from Leeds at one stage, but he, as he puts it himself, he found his legs at around the age of 23. Get up, get up. What a player Terry Cooper turned into. Southend, free kick. Taken by Paul Clark, the Southend captain. Way by Dryden. Here's Crown. In then from Smith. And a quick counter-attack perhaps, but no. It breaks down for Exeter. And now they have the free kick. But Southend are certainly giving Exeter a fight tonight. Any number of permutations are still open, really, with regard to that third promotion place. If Exeter and Grimsby fix the first two, Southend are under a lot of pressure from the clubs just below them. Austin with Neville threatening. Austin away. Now Kelly. Early ball for Neville. That's a good ball in for Batty. And Satsup just got there first. Ling. Harley's tackle, though, was very effective. Ling again. Dryden. Overhit for Neville. Austin. Straight to Batty. And he's given it away then to Paul Smith. Now Cooper. Edwards. Here's Crown. Didn't he ride the tackles well there? Now Butler. Crown. Here's Ling. Applause bringing around St James's Park. More in relief, I think, than anything else. Exeter dealing with another menacing south end attack. Off Edinburgh, Bailey was in. Flags up again for offside. The Exeter strikers have been caught rather too often, I would think, for Terry Cooper's liking tonight. And Southampton have a free kick. Even Steve Neville has come back to defend. Exeter with all ten outfield players behind the ball. Miller didn't make a clean catch. Edinburgh to Ling. There could be danger, but no. Over the head of David Crown. And into the arms of Kevin Miller. Clark with Neville. Neville got the better of him. Now, does he have the pace here? Right on the edge of the area. And before Steve Neville can have his say, the referee points to where the kick is. It's just outside the area. Neville was about to complain it should have been a penalty. It'll certainly be a booking. Edinburgh scything down Steve Neville. A booking. The crowd wanted the sending off. The referee is prepared to be sufficiently lenient there, and it's only a yellow card. Neville was almost clean through. Kelly, straight into the wall. Batty shot then deflected. It's a corner. The second goal now would make life a lot easier for Exeter. Just the one goal between the two teams.
Here's the corner. Benjamin headed clear. Austin's tackle on Whitehead. Neville. Finding Batty. Richard Young. Now Rogers, who'd stayed up. He still has Young in there, too. No foul. There is now. On Paul Smith. Free kick to Southend. 15 minutes of the second half gone. And it's still a very tight struggle out there. Exeter with their noses in front, but they know they're not there yet. And Southend fighting them every inch of the way. Batty, I think, is the player who's gone down there. The referee just having a word with Peter Butler. Free kick to Exeter when Batty has received some attention. In the meantime, Mark Cooper has gone off for South End and Steve Tilson has replaced him. So the manager's son taking no further part in this game. The young man who's on loan to South End from Exeter. Steve Tilson is on number 14. And it's Dryden with the free kick for Exeter. Goes Benjamin, but Brighton has gone with him all the way. Not the best of clearances then from Kevin Miller. Good save by Terry Cooper. Austin. Another clearance goes askew. Exeter looking to establish now a firm grip on the game. They have one goal, they could do with another one. But here's Benjamin for Southend. Southend, in fact, seeking revenge for a home defeat inflicted by Exeter earlier in the season, 2-1 at Roots Hall. Back in December. Here's Clark taking the free kick. Benjamin. Now Crown. Always danger when he's in possession. And it's just quick wide. Crown was so unlucky there. That was a brilliant run by him. It was deflected and away for the corner. And no wonder David Crown is holding his head. He's so sharp. And they simply couldn't contain him then. And all they have from that south end is a corner. Benjamin. Some pushing. The south end fans behind the goal cheer, but it won't count. The referee had already blown the whistle. Some pushing around that six-yard area before Benjamin headed it in. Twenty minutes gone in the second half. It's still Exeter one, South End nil. Another free kick to South End. Rather unlucky to be relegated last season, South End. And they were hoping to storm back at the first attempt. They may well still do that. But unless they can change this game around, it's going to be a serious setback. Batty.
Benjamin. And he was back again to his marker then, Lee Rogers. Well, they're arguing their case, Benjamin and Crow. Uh, I wouldn't recommend them to take it too far. Crown, remember, was booked in the first half by referee Peter Jones. Clark. Off goes Benjamin, he's onside here. Now Crown taking over. Triton this time, showing his defensive qualities and, in fact, fouled by Crown. He let his frustrations get the better of him then. But he has been a real threat up front for Southend tonight, David Crown. Highly takes the kick. Clark leaning all over Richard Young, who must be a few inches taller than him. Here's Hiley taking the free kick. Whitehead. And over the line for a goal kick. By Whitehead, such a versatile figure in the end of the setup. play by Butler, flags up though, down below me for offside. And we've had a few of those tonight. This is Kelly. Young. Clark is with him, got his tackle in well. Smith, straight though to Dryden. Tilson. Well, they couldn't shake him off. Here's Benjamin now, spreading the play delightfully. Links cross, Tilson. Will it fall for Crown? Oh, Rogers with the back pass. Away to safety. But they were living dangerously then for Exeter City. Especially with that man Crown lurking. Here we can see it again as it's played in. There's a tentative back pass in there somewhere. Playing with the cross, and there it is, touch back. And it was nearly costly. Dryden. Edinburgh. Benjamin has come forward to avoid the offside trap. Twenty minutes of the game to go. It's a cracking atmosphere now. Exeter inching their way towards promotion. One goal will be enough as long as South End don't score two. Kelly, Batty, it'll fall here for Young. Oh, neat skill. Still Young. And it's there, there's the second. McDermott. Surely now that settled it. Some great play by Richard Young, setting up McDermott for the second goal. It's 2-0. And look at the fancy footwork here. Young pulling it back, and McDermott smacking it in the first time. Sanson beaten. Brian McDermott. 
Goal number five for him this season. And the cry now around St James's Park is going up, going up. And who would bet against Exeter now? It's a mountain for South End to climb. Benjamin. How quickly can they respond? The shot goes wide. And the celebrations are underway now at St James's. And I bet down on the bench, Terry Cooper breathed a huge sigh of relief seeing that second one go in. Firecracker is being let off around the ground. Jubilation among the Exeter fans. Edwards tumbling Neville, but no foul. Here's Clark. South End need a goal very badly indeed now if they're to haul themselves back into this game. David Webb's team, two goals down. Exeter, another positive step towards that third division place next season. Scott Hiley. Off goes McDermott. Edinburgh. He's a very promising young defender, this fellow. Watch out for his name. He's just come back from a loan period with Tottenham. Link now. And here's Benjamin. He's hit it wide. It was a cleared opening then. And there may not be too many of those coming South End's way. Well set up by Ling, who had the foresight to spot Benjamin in a shooting position and he failed to hit the target. McDermott. Benjamin. Free kick for hands by Lee Rogers. So aware of the presence of Crown behind him. Now, free kick then to South End. What can they do here? The wall did its job. Butler. This is Crown. They can't allow him any space at all. Tilson. And it's rather sadly for him. Rolled away for the goal kick. Steve Tilson, one of South End's second half substitutes. <laughs> Neville with the header. Now McDermott and the goalkeeper Sansom has come all the way. I thought for a moment they need to handle that. <laughs> That's the uh, claim of one or two of the Exeter players, too. It's a throw. Highly to take it. Neville. Neville threatening to wriggle through. Paul Smith for South End. Finding Benjamin. Bailey in there tigerishly though. Benjamin scrapping then with Rogers. And it all comes to nothing. And the tackling of Danny Bailey played a crucial part then. He's such a scrapper, Danny Bailey. Anything that loose, he's in there. A quarter of an hour left. Exeter leading South End by two goals to nil. If it stays this way, they will be promoted. Edinburgh. Here's Hiley. Fought in possession though. Now McDermott. Down the line for Young to chase. Well, that could have been a very useful ball in there. Edwards came across. It's a corner then to Exeter. McDermott to take it.
They've kept Rogers back, but Dryden's in there. Off the line. It was Edinburgh who was guarding that post. Exeter on top and hoping now to finish the match with a flourish. And if they go on to claim that promotion place, as they surely will now, no one can deny them their right to it. Batty! Exeter have been among the leading positions throughout the season. They've shown terrific form here at St James's, of course. And if in any way they'd match that away from home, they'd have secured promotion weeks ago. now is that surely they are going up crown he's forced the corner it could have been more serious though the south end fans desperately trying to make themselves heard behind that goal trying to encourage their side certainly made a contest of it but it's looking more and more as if the three points are going to Exeter heading for their 18th home win of this excellent season for them but crowd now oh what a goal oh that's a great finish and perhaps they are going to stage a comeback Example then of the exemplary finishing power of David Crown. And suddenly we've got a match on again. Benjamin's pass and Crown. Well, that's a great effort. It's 2 1. Just to underline once again, this will be enough. One point, remember, is all that Exeter need. But if South End should persevere and score another one, who knows what might happen. Let's hope the celebrations aren't premature. McDermott, Richard Young. Didn't have the strength though, on this occasion anyway, to force his way past Tilson. Fresh hope for South End. And we could be in for quite a finale. Here's Crown with Rogers. Marvellous goalkeeping by Kevin Miller. Crown was through again, and he was denied then by the agility of Miller. What a match he's having, David Crown. And with ten minutes to go, South End clearly aren't finished yet. Austin, the right fullback. It's a corner. And what an outstanding spell this is then for South End. have left only Neville upfield. Everybody else is back. It wasn't cleared, and the shot goes wide. Edwards off the mark. But the corner wasn't cleared away. And it's hooked past the post. Clark jumping well. Dryden with a free header. Butler finds Benjamin. He set Crown in the clear. Crown is through. Is this going to be a second one? Highly to the rescue. Down on the bench, Terry Cooper will be having kittens. It's a very slender lead it's looking now. Yes, but all seems safe for Exeter, and they 
look to be cruising to victory. We've got a different game on now. Over the bar. And behind that goal, the South End supporters are cheering deliriously. and certainly aren't going out of this game with a whimper. There are now eight minutes left. Eight minutes for the fans to endure. Eight minutes for Exeter City, the players to survive. Bailey got back so well. McDermott is young. Now highly. Keeper to the other though, just Neville's header intervening. It's an exit to throw. They may not know exactly how many minutes to go, but they know it's not too long, and no one now will want to make a mistake. to keep the ball in South End's territory for as long as they can now. Highly with the throw. McDermott, scorer of the second goal. Highly again. <laughs> McDermott. Trying to shrug off Tilson. Six minutes left. Benjamin. Oh, McDermott with a miss kick. I can't afford any of those at this stage. McDermott again. Off goes Neville. Clark with him, though. And Sanson will hoist another long ball up into the exit of half. Young, surely Neville was offside. But a few more seconds have ticked away. Here's the free kick from Edinburgh. Benjamin to Tilson. Edinburgh. Ground was again marauding just outside that six yard area. And Exeter may still have some desperate defending to do. Southend doing their utmost now to throw everything into attack. Benjamin. He's picked out Link. Austin, it's all about the shot. There's no flag. And again, it was Kevin Miller who stood between South End and a goal. As Butler went on. And they're hanging on here, Exeter. Bailey. It's another corner. There are now only four minutes left. A dramatic finish to the game. Feels for a penalty, and the referee has given the free kick the other way. For a moment, that David Crown, who did seem to fall, thought he got a penalty. And 
there was an ooh and a gasp all around the ground. <laughs> Bailey back there with Paul Smith. Towards Young. Clark it for South End. Exeter two, South End one. He'll be highly with the free kick. He'll not be in too much of a hurry now. And of course, a third goal would surely end all doubts. Young inevitably is the target. Neville went down, only half-hearted appeals though, this time for a penalty. We found quite a few claims this evening. Link now. Brown's onside, is he? No, the flag's up. Wouldn't have counted anyway. Exeter at the back then was sufficiently organised. Not long to go now. Down in the dugout there, Terry Cooper and the other officials and players hoping his team are going to do it. Austin will take the throw as quickly as he can now for South End. It's been a long, long road to promotion for Exeter, but they've almost clinched it. Well, somehow the the linesman has given offside over there when there was a player a long way back, which I don't think he'd seen, to be honest. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I think Terry Cooper's too pleased, though. Way by Batty. There's Neville. Just nicked ten before Austin. We're now into the last minute. Be some fingernails chewed around the ground here. Miller claims it. And another threatening moment passes. The referee has glanced at his watch. Clark forward. Feels for offside. Successful. And around the ground now again. The cry is going up. Rogers all the way back to Kevin Miller. 30 seconds on the clock. The night looks as like if it's going to end in triumph for Exeter City. Edwards in trouble. Here's Neville. And there's still time for another long kick upfield from Sansom. Clark for South End. Off goes Crown with Rogers. Safely steered back though. We're now into time added on. One or two injuries, so there'll be a few seconds yet to play. But not much. And there is the final whistle. And Exeter City have done it. They have gained promotion here by virtue of this 2-1 win. And onto the field stream the fans. I don't think they're going to kick them off now. Bitter disappointment for South End. They'll have to wait a little longer to see if they are going up. But Exeter City have made it. Terry Cooper receiving the congratulations of all those around him. Such a popular, likeable figure at St James's Park. And what a job he's done steering Exeter to promotion. They've been a revelation, of course, at home. 18 wins now here. And look at these scenes. Promotion is in the air at St James's Park.
There were more champagne celebrations three days later when City secured the championship itself with victory over Scarborough. Here's McDermott, plays the ball into the area. Neville, and that's got to be a penalty. So can Tom Kelly score his first goal for Exeter City from the spot? Sends the keeper the wrong way, and City leading by a goal to nil. Free kick then for Scarborough, played into the area, headed away by Young. Long-range effort from Dobson. Disaster for Exeter, it's one all. Here's Neville, plays the ball through. Young sliding in, and that's restored Exeter's lead. So the Scarborough corner swings in, cleared, not far enough. Dobson shot, and it just goes into that corner. Bailey. Good play from him on the right wing. Can he get a cross in? Yes, he can. And appeals for handball. And another penalty for Exeter. And it's all up to Tom Kelly. He makes it 3-2, and surely that is the championship for City. Just seconds remaining now. The referee looks at his watch. He blows the final whistle. The crowd are back on the pitch. City are the fourth division champions. Their first major trophy in 84 years and the players being lifted and carried shoulder high off the pitch. The presentation came before the last home game of the season against Burnley. Another large crowd packed into St James's Park to see Sean Taylor proudly lift the trophy. Exeter were aiming to complete the season with an unbeaten home record, but when the game started, Burnley proved strong opposition. They took the lead when John Francis got the better of Taylor and beat Kevin Miller with a good shot. Three minutes into the second half, City were level. McDermott's free kick, Taylor's flick, and a firm header from Clive Whitehead. The winner came after exactly an hour's play. A typical run from Steve Neville and a great finish from tall striker Richard Young. So, with a superb 5-1 win at Lincoln to round off the season, Exeter finished a massive 10 points clear of their nearest rivals, Grimsby Town. South End also gained automatic promotion in third place. The supporters think a lot about me at the minute, but if we <laughs> languishing in the third division, it can soon change. My problems have started now because we've got promotion. Uh, so I need to probably get a couple of good players in to go with what we've got. But if I can get the correct two players in, I'm only talking about two, I think we'll, uh, we'll do well next year and we'll settle for a playoff place next year. A lot of supporters want to know about your future. Are you uh, intending to stay at the club for a, well, for a long time? Well, I need to. I need to get this season out of the way and sit down and have a. Uh, I don't want to stop in football the rest of my life. Uh, all I will say to the supporters is I don't want to go to another club. And you'd like to take Exeter into the second division, perhaps? Well, I didn't say that. I said I've been in football a long time. Uh, but if I leave Exeter, it will not be for another club. So the curtain came down on the 1989-90 season, one that will go into the history books and one which will live on in supporters' memories for many years yet. Now, of course, thoughts turn to the third division and who knows, yet another promotion campaign. Exeter City in the second division, don't bet against it. Kelly. Batty. Little fall here for Young. Oh, neat skill. Still Young. And it's there, there's the second. McDermott. 